I call upon Dr. Tony Crook of the School of Philosophical, Anthropological and Film Studies. Vice-Chancellor, it is my privilege to present for the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa, His Highness Tuyatua Tupua Tamasesi Taisi Efi. Samoan cultural knowledge and customary status. He was fortunate to be born into a family who recognized that such privileges carried heavy responsibilities to cultural custodianship and duties to political leadership. Tuya Tua's grandfather challenged colonialism's grip on Samoa, and his father was amongst those guiding the country to independence in 1962 and he shared the duty of being Samoa's first head of state. Alongside these genealogical connections to some of the most paramount and royal families in Samoa, Tuya Tua's family are also connected to Sweden, the United States, and Scotland. When Robert Louis Stevenson settled down in Samoa in 1890, he became great friends with Tuya Tua's great-grandparents. Tuya Tua's great-grandmother spoke with a Scots brogue, acquired through her teenage schooling here. His great-grandfather sold Stevenson the hilltop Vailima estate, reportedly for a stiff price, where the Scottish writer, known locally as Tusitala, the teller of tales, bought a house, lived well, and is now buried. Tuya Tua's many customary titles carry the achievements of his forebears. Yet he has honoured, added to, and grown these names and knowledges through a life devoted to political service and through his outstanding achievements and contributions to cultural custodianship and to academic scholarship, which we are honouring today. From 1976 to 1982, Tuya Tua served two terms as Prime Minister, and from 2007 to 2017, he served two terms as Head of State. Disturbed by the growing forces of globalization and the waning relevance of Samoan customary knowledge and language in the 1970s, Tuya Tua was encouraged by his wife, Her Highness Masiofo Filifilia Imo Tamasesi, to do something about it by writing a book in the Samoan language. Tuya Tua has subsequently written several more books, dozens of scholarly articles and keynote addresses, bringing Samoan customary knowledge to international audiences. His topics have covered climate change, Pacific leadership, fragrance, cultural taboos, political discourse, traditional navigation, and bioethics. His Highness is highly respected as one of the foremost experts on Samoan language, culture, and philosophy. He is renowned across the Pacific region as a leading voice on finding Pacific ways to decolonize the thinking behind the social, economic, and environmental effects of a globalizing world. In the 1980s, in the late 1980s, Tuya Tua was part of the South Commission, whose report, The Challenge to the South, sought to upgrade the international community by treating developing countries as equals. In 2005, Tuya Tua served as the Oceania representative to the Pontifical Interreligious Dialogue Commission, and he wrote, Harmony in the Samoan indigenous religion finds equivalence and balance in all living things. To respect nature is to respect man. To respect one's fellow men is to respect oneself. Respecting the soul is to, is to respect the body and mind. Respecting life is to respect death. These scholarly interventions develop a method of using the Samoan indigenous reference to engage contemporary issues. In doing so, 
Tuia Tua avoids both reverential adherence to, and also unthinking abandonment of, Samoan heritage, aiming to find new ways of living in harmony in our ever-changing world. Tuia Tua's scholarship has been recognised through academic fellowships in several universities in New Zealand and Australia, and has been prominent through international keynote addresses, including those of the East West Centre in Hawaii and the University of the South Pacific in Fiji. Tuia Tua served as Chancellor to the University of the South Pacific from 2008 to 9, and was Chancellor to the National University of Samoa from 2008 to 2013. Tuya Tua's method of the Samoan indigenous reference creates space for calling out vitally important and detrimental globalized conventions that are otherwise difficult to speak about. This method and body of work clearly holds relevance and influence beyond Samoa. Ahead of the UN Climate Summit in Copenhagen in 2009, Tuia Tua used Samoan indigenous references to the way fishermen address and bestow honour on a shoal of mackerel who reciprocate by respectfully giving themselves in return to challenge the arrogance and greed of humanity separating itself from and then dominating all other forms of life. When Samoa hosted the UN conference of small island developing states in 2014, Tuia Tua took the UN Secretary General aboard the Hukulea, a majestic double-hulled voyaging canoe of the kind Pacific Islanders had used to explore and settle every island across a third of the Earth's surface by the time the University of St Andrews was founded 600 years ago. Ban Ki-moon put the spirit of Samoan indigenous reference in declaring that we are all in the same canoe, sailing aboard the earth on a journey through the stars. In 2015, in the lead up to the UN Climate Summit in Paris, Tuia Tua paired his view of climate change from the perspective of fish with a speech to the European Union in Brussels, pointing to a Samoan indigenous reference in the refusal of two starlings to break from their enjoyable coupling, despite being knocked off their conjugal branch. The example warned the international community to maintain its dialogue despite the difficulties. In fact, it was Pacific leadership which catalyzed the coalition of high ambition that reached the Paris Climate Agreement. Tuya Tua's insistence that getting into the global conversation to protect the most beautiful things in life needs the backup of great scholarship is a lesson all of us are celebrating here today. Vice Chancellor, in recognition of his major contribution to cultural custodianship and academic scholarship, I invite you to confer the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa on His Highness Tuia Tua Tupua Tamasesi Taisi Efi. <coughs> Thank you. 
Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to receive this award. But in truth, the honor belongs to my forebears. It is they who had gathered and passed on to successive generations like mine the history, culture, customs, and usage, which is now ours. The most significant challenge for indigenous people all over the globe is how to keep our indigenous knowledges alive and thriving alongside the best in the world. When our theologies and philosophies are taken seriously by the top universities in the world, there is much to celebrate and be grateful for. It is therefore a high honor for me to have the work of my forebears recognized by this very esteemed university. On behalf of my forebears and my family, I want to thank the University of St. Andrews for this special recognition. I thank in particular Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal Professor Sally Webster and the Center for Pacific Studies for their warm support and sponsorship. I also acknowledge the loving support of my wife and my family and friends, not only those who have traveled from far away, but also those at home who are here with us in spirit. Thank you.
Choir Master, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted particularly to say thank you to you yesterday. You sang uh, a salmon song, and the articulation was beautiful. Uh, and uh, you touch us in a very special way. And uh, I want to tell you why. Um, we have a saying in my language that the highest wisdom is shown by how you blend idiosyncrasy. And when we came from, from New Zealand to Los Angeles, we were told that we didn't need to, to um, uh, come up with any evidence except the most important thing is fingerprints. Now the significance of that to me is that this is a recognition of Id idiosyncrasy. Every single person in the billions of people around the world is distinctive. Oh. Um, and in recognizing idiosyncrasy, you pay homage and you pay highest respect to another culture. When I was young, uh, the, one of the signs of colonialism, you know, which is uh, you know, concentrated and deliberate, is to, to mimic or to uh, uh, take on, you know, a language, you know, whether it's Chinese, Japanese, or our language. And uh, it's, it's very telling, because people were saying, well, look, uh, we, we do not want to go into your culture uh, with the respect that we give to ours. We condescend to your culture. Now that was a very significant message because I listened to it this morning and I was close to tears in your singing to check whether you know, my first impression is right and it was reinforced because not only did you sing it beautifully but the articulation was wonderful. And there wasn't the condescension or the inverted colonialism that puts us off, to be quite frank. And uh, it reminded me also of your teachers, the people who were people that I loved very much, and uh, some of them are gone. But you know, they went through my mental radar because you sang so well and uh, spoke to me in a very powerful way. And I believe I'm doing honor to their memory and also uh, honor to you that today you reflect the finest in the blending process, which you need. If you really want, if you really want people to come together, then there need to be love and respect for their culture. And there's no better way of demonstrating that than to sing it with beautiful articulation. And so that you catch the essences and the nuance of the song. Uh, I've asked him to take uh, me, but more importantly you, on your presentation yesterday so that it will be passed around our people, not only in Samoa but also in Polynesia, uh, about, you know, what you, what you want to do if you are going to achieve a bringing together of people, which is an exhibition, a demonstration of the highest regard for idiosyncrasy. Equally, on my part, uh, I heard somebody uh, at the church service speaking that sermon with a Scots bro. And I was happy because my great-grandmother spoke with us gospel. She was raised somewhere around here by Johnsons who were Scots. 
And I heard my great grandma speaking to me through the message that, you know, the least of my brethren, uh, I have, I owe a special duty to look out for. And it is out of love and respect, you know, for people. And this is, this is the message that is most important, particularly for formerly colonized people, that you actually love and respect our culture. And there's no more effective way than the singing and the pronunciation. So I wanted especially to come and thank you and to tell you that uh, when I leave tomorrow, this is one of the beautiful legacies I take back with me to my family and to our people. So without any more ado, I know that you've got a very busy program. I have brought along my rubbish and I hope uh, that some of you will bother to read it. But uh, uh, I have my friend um, Tony there. Uh, if anybody wishes you know, to, to communicate with me on anything that I say or wants to challenge uh, what I say, feel free to say that I'm, I'm talking bullshit. But, <laughs> but the thing is, there's only one condition. If you say that, then you're bound to tell me why. <laughs> <laughs> and I will try to respond as best I can. But thank you for the opportunity to see and to express to you my gratitude, my admiration, and I hope that we will meet again either here or if ever you come to our place, please let me know. Because, you know, I am now, I consider myself a... Uh, somebody from uh, the great place in Scotland. <laughs> and uh, I share a heritage, a history, and most importantly, a paradigm and a, and a, that will guide uh, me and hopefully you in the future. God bless. Okay. Um, and it was a, an absolute privilege to be able to sing, mm. sing a Samoan song mm. in your presence. So thank you very much. Mm.